Big changes are on the way, and for some of you, it could mean the first flakes of the season. We talked about this in our last video, that a strong high pressure was going to form over Greenland, and that's going to shake up the jet stream. So let's talk about how far that south that cold air is going to reach and who could see the first snow before Thanksgiving. Let's dive right into the details. As we watch our jet stream here on our Wednesday morning, we're watching a little trough here dig into the northeast. And where they're going, behind it, we're watching a more zonal flow with a little bit of ridging. That's going to pump in some southwesterly flow ahead of this next trough that's going to form on our Friday. This is going to help instigate some severe weather through the lower Tennessee and Ohio valleys into Friday. But back behind it, we're now tapping in. Here's the Arctic, the polar jet. It's going to dive south, and it's going to bring some of the coldest air to the central plains for Saturday and Sunday, making its way to the Ohio and Tennessee valleys by our Monday. And look how far deep into the south it goes. It goes into Alabama, Mississippi, northern Georgia, and the Carolinas. You are not going to escape this cold pattern. By the time we get to Monday and Tuesday of next week, that retreats, and we start to watch another ridge build out west. But here comes yet another system by the time we get to the middle of the week. So for the Great Lakes, this is going to provide a lot of cold air, and those waters are relatively warm still this time of the year. And as those winds go across the lake, we could be seeing significant lake effect snows in those favorite areas over the coming days. So let's take a look at how this all sets up. As we begin our Wednesday, we, we watch this little trough digging here across the northern parts of the plains into Minnesota. That's going to move into the northeast, bringing with it snow on the north side, rain New York into Connecticut. Way up across Hudson Bay, we still have snow off of the warmer waters. We have an area of high pressure here across the central plains, an area of low pressure that's going to move its way through the southeast Wednesday into Thursday. And out west, we're talking about the Pineapple Express. The zonal flow, the jet stream has been very zonal this week from west to east. So we're getting those winds and that moisture straight up from Hawaii that's making their way into northern California. Small direct stream of moisture. And that's going to bring heavy amounts of rainfall and snowfall to California as we go Wednesday into Thursday. By the time we get to Thursday, though, that rain has shut off in northern California. But look across parts of British Columbia. Heavy snow as we now have another atmospheric river that's just off the map, but it is impacting British Columbia with heavy amounts of snow. We see that trough here in the northeast, lingering snow showers across parts of New York State into Vermont and New Hampshire. High pressure is entrenched over the Ohio Valley, and down across the Gulf, we could see scattered showers. But across parts of Alberta, there's the next system, that low pressure system that's going to dive into the lower 48 and bring the threat of severe weather as we go into our Friday. So let's put all this into motion. We watch the storms move on to California's coast Wednesday during the day. They kind of die out by Thursday morning, but we have heavy snow across British Columbia. And here comes that clipper system diving into the northeast, bringing snow across the Canadian provinces. But it's going to tap into some moisture, and it's going to bring rain through the lower Ohio and Tennessee valleys. Some of that rain, by the time we get to Friday evening, could be severe. Out across the northeast, though, we're going to watch another clipper system make its way and bring amounts of snow for our Thursday into our Friday. Temperatures are going to be seasonal for our Wednesday, if not a few degrees above normal, as we get a little bit of surge of warmer air to the, from the south into places like the Ohio Valley, into Oklahoma and Texas, where you're in the 80s and 90s. As we go into our Friday, it's still warm relatively across most of the country. And with that trough getting ready to dig in, we have those southwesterly winds. We're going to pump a lot of warmth into places like Kentucky and Tennessee, where you're going to see highs in the 70s for your Friday. So as we look at our Friday, the setup, we have that area of low pressure that's made its way across out of Alberta into the northern Great Lakes, and it's a very powerful low pressure system. On our Thursday, it was just a 997 millibar low there across parts of eastern Alberta. But by the time we get to Friday, it has deepened as it's made its way here into the Great Lakes, 994. And it's bringing a lot of wind and moisture up from the south. We can tell from these pressure lines and the tightness of them that we're going to have strong southwesterly winds. That's why we believe that we're going to get a lot of warming across the Ohio and Tennessee Valley. That warm air is going to collide with the colder air, and it's going to set up some severe thunderstorms as it moves into the northeast Friday night into Saturday. Still where it's on the colder side, we see those blue 500 millibar height contour lines. Anywhere north of that 540 line, that's where it's going to be cold enough for snow, and we can see that snow pile up for parts of Ontario into our Friday afternoon. As we get to Friday morning, this is about where our forecast begins to lose confidence in what's going to happen as we approach the weekend. We're going to look at two different models here. The first, the GFS, and then we'll look at the European. Both of them have different solutions on what's going to happen as a result of a clipper system that's right now beginning to get formed across parts of southern Alberta, northern Idaho, and as it makes its way into the, the Midwest. So let's take a look at this. We watch that clipper system dive. It's bringing snow to the Dakotas, and it's bringing heavy snow into parts of Iowa through Illinois as we go Saturday into Sunday, even through Indiana as it then takes off into southern Ontario. And that cold air, look at those temperature lines diving all the way down towards the Gulf Coast. 
by the time we get to Sunday into Monday. That low pressure system races up through Quebec, bringing heavy amounts of snow. Here's the European model. It wants to bring that same clipper system out across the Dakotas. Snow across the Dakotas, but it's not bringing as much colder air in with the system. We go through Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin. It's mainly rain, and it's not until that low gets up into Quebec and we start to get that wrap around that we start to see that colder air. Looking at our temperatures on our Sunday, where we have that snow being laid down from the Dakotas into northern Iowa, temperatures could be below freezing for your afternoon highs. We have early after morning highs in the 50s. These temperatures will be falling throughout the day on our Sunday. As we go into our Tuesday of next week, we're still relatively cool in the eastern half of the United States, but we're already rebounding with our temperatures here across the Central Plains, warming back into the 60s and 70s, where you had that snowfall across the Dakotas. Temperatures are being kept down in the 50s, but the main story is going to be our overnight low temperatures. We're going to see widespread hard freezes for most of the Central Plains, even down into the Deep South, Sunday night into Monday night into early Tuesday morning. Here as we wake up on our Sunday morning, we have freeze conditions across most of Kansas, Missouri, making its way into northeastern Oklahoma. By the time we begin our new work week, Monday morning, we have single digits across the Dakotas. I wouldn't be surprised if we have some areas dipping below zero, but we have widespread teens and 20s across the Ohio Valley, and those sub-freezing temperatures make their way all the way down into Texas, northern Alabama, even Atlanta. You could be flirting with 32 degrees for your Monday morning, and then all the way up the east coast as well. Along the coast, you will be warmer. Temperatures here only in the 40s and 50s for your nighttime lows. Even down here in Louisiana, southern Louisiana, you could be in the upper 30 for your nighttime lows. This is rare air for this time of the year to be digging this far south and this cold. Uh, usually we see this pattern in December or January uh, with those real bitter cold outbreaks, but now we're seeing this here in the second week of November. Now I told you here that there is some discrepancy in the models that I do want to talk about. This is the GFS model. This is Monday early in the morning, about 5 a.m. We see that the snow in the area of low pressure has made its way off into Quebec, bringing snow across parts of Quebec. We do have that lake effect snow off of Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, into Lake Ontario that's bringing snow in those favored snow belts. But across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, relatively calm condition. Contrast this with the European model. Same time period, much tighter pressure lines here from Missouri through Indiana. We're also seeing the presence of snow across this area that the American model did not uh, connect to with. But look out here across Kansas. This again is the night when we expect very cold temperatures. And that's going to be thanks to this 1042 millibar high pressure that's really going to let the temperatures plummet across the central plains. Look how tight these, these pressure lines are. So we're going to have strong winds. And we think about the, count, the clockwise around the high and then the counterclockwise that's going to be here. We're thinking this model is wanting to hint at a meso low spinning up across parts of eastern Illinois western Indiana and if this is the case this is going to provide a good chance of accumulating snow to the north and to the west of where this meso low does set up and what are we going to look for here to determine if, if this is the setup that's going to play into come into play so one of the things we look at is that we look at the surface map be be before now we're going up a little bit higher in the atmosphere at the 850 millibar level we're checking the temperature and we're checking uh, the winds at that location and what we see is here with these pinks and these blues indicated by our color chart we have temperatures that are well below zero degrees centigrade in the upper level of the atmosphere very cold enough to support snow in this area we see the wind direction out of the north so this is going to definitely be bringing in colder air on the back side of this meso low if it decides to develop here across parts of eastern illinois the other thing we want to look at is we want to look at the horizontal kinematic frontogenesis what this tells us is where we see these blues on the map here, and we see them here across eastern Illinois, western Indiana. This is an area where we're going to see heightened uprising of air in the atmosphere. And that rising of air can lead to the development of precipitation under the right circumstances. We think we're going to have enough moisture here in the atmosphere. It's definitely cold enough, and there's enough of a baroclinic zone, basically a, a, a temperature gradient over a short distance in this area by the time we get to early Monday morning, that we could spin up a meso low across this area. And if that's the case, then we could see accumulating snowfall along the I-70 corridor through Illinois and Indiana Monday morning into Monday afternoon. So this is something we're definitely going to be watching. But overall, our precipitation here across the eastern half of the United States will fall in the form of rainfall, mainly Friday into Saturday, as we see the, that those strong southerly winds bring moisture out of the Gulf with the passage of that cold front before that cold air begins to wrap around. Here across the plains, this is going to fall in the form of snowfall, and that snowfall could accumulate to a few inches by the time we get to Saturday into Sunday. 
and out across the west coast it's that atmospheric river the pineapple express whatever you want to call it that's bringing heavy amounts of rainfall to that area in fact if we look here across parts of washington state down through oregon two to four inches of rainfall is likely and if we go even down into northern california we could see one to two inches down towards san francisco into the interior as we get into the mountains it's going to be heavy amounts of mountain snow measured in the feet and speaking of that snowfall this is the gfs model that wants to lay a swath of snow the heaviest being across the dakotas but also through southern minnesota northern iowa into southern wisconsin now this model is the gfs so it doesn't have that meso low that wants to spin up so we're going to continue to watch the two models to see if they converge to one solution whether it be the gfs or the european model over the next 24 to 48 hours and we will bring you the latest information on that here at the weather farm and while we're talking of snow this is the time of the year that we start seeing these risk of heavy snow maps being issued and so with that moisture being pummeled to the west coast from those atmospheric rivers we're starting to see a moderate risk of heavy snow in the sierras as we get towards the middle of the month we do have a slight risk in those higher elevations of the Rockies and, and the Cascades into Washington and Oregon. So we're going to continue to watch this, but east of the Rockies, we're really not expecting a risk of snow in the next to 10 days. But the thing we are also monitoring here as we get it closer and closer to win winter, reminder, November is the last month of meteorological fall. Once we turn the calendar to December 1st, it's meteorological winter. And so we're watching where is that snowpack beginning to build. Here we have that snowpack building across parts of Ontario into Quebec, uh, when cold air comes down out of Canada into the northeast, it's able to maintain its cold temperatures as it travels over a pretty good snowpack. Out here across parts of British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, even into Manitoba, we're not really forecasting a snowpack to build by the time we get to the middle of November. So as that cold air gets dislodged out of Alaska and the Yukon and travels south, it has a chance to moderate in it and warm. Thank you for joining us here at the Weather Farm. We hope you've enjoyed this forecast. Go ahead and drop your comments and location. What kind of weather are you seeing? Are you able to get out this week and get those last minute chores done before we get into the depths of winter? Or are you already seeing snowfall and heavy rainfall where you're located? Let us know in the comments and we hope you have a great day.